The Russian occupation army fighting against Ukraine will soon be transferred to ancient BRDM-2 armored vehicles. The mass depreservation of these Soviet vehicles has begun. OSINT researcher Jumpy drew attention to this on his X account. Analyzing satellite images of equipment storage bases in Russia, he noticed that the Russians had begun repairing BRDM-2s for further dispatch to the front. It looks like Russia is starting a mass decommissioning of BRDM-2s at bases like the 22nd. This is pretty good news, the expert wrote. In his comments, he clarified that the Russians had already decommissioned the BTR-70 and BTR-60 and put them into use. The fact that the Russians needed BRDM-2s at the front speaks to the growing shortage of normal armored personnel carriers in the Russian occupation army. The BRDM-2 is not only a very outdated model, it also has a low capacity, only four soldiers can fit in it a driver, commander, gunner, and shooter. In addition, the BRDM-2's armor is significantly inferior to modern armor standards, especially compared to the latest armored vehicles. This armored vehicle has armor thicknesses from 6 to 14 millimeters, which provides bulletproof and anti-fragmentation protection. This is sufficient to protect against small arms of up to 7.62 millimeter caliber and light fragments. The BRDM-2 also does not have special anti-mine protection. The BRDM-2 is a seven-ton Soviet armored combat vehicle developed in the 1960s to perform reconnaissance and patrol missions. The vehicle was widely used in the Soviet Union. Production of this model of armored vehicle was discontinued in the 1980s under the USSR. The main purpose of the vehicle is reconnaissance and patrol tasks, which requires compactness and mobility. Equipped with two machine guns of 14.5 and 7.62 mm calibers, Earlier, it was reported that Vladimir Putin was desperately emptying Russian museums of obsolete tanks to repurpose them for his creaking war effort. It has emerged. Aging Soviet-era T-62s are seen being modernized in a round-the-clock factory in Chita, Siberia. The drive to retrofit the decades-old tanks highlights the desperation of Putin's military machine while Ukraine is being supplied with the most modern Western tanks. Some of the tanks being revamped at the 103rd plant may be 60 years old, dating from the time Nikita Khrushchev and Leonid Brezhnev were ruling the USSR. It is sad that the number of exhibits of military museums will be reduced, said one report. Russia halted T-62 production 12 years ago, but may still have as many as 2,500 of them held in stores and museums. The tanks were first built in 1961, a further development of the T-55 series, and became the standard tank in the Soviet arsenal and remained in reserve in many former USSR countries and in frontline use for other countries. More than 22,700 T-62s were built in total, and it was later replaced on the production lines by the T-72 in 1973, which is still widely in use in Russia and Ukraine today. Russian troops are deploying dummies on the front lines to fool Ukrainian FPV drones into futile attacks. According to The Telegraph, videos posted online show the dummies dressed in military uniforms lined up in a wooded area, with one appearing to be holding a missile launcher. Most likely, the publication writes, the dummies are intended to attract and confuse Ukrainian FPV drones, potentially diverting fire from real targets. As Keir Giles, an expert at the Chatham House think tank, noted, such decoys are in line with a trend in warfare to become increasingly personalized, with drones going after individual targets in the form of individual people. Russian troops often play dead when they see an FPV drone above them, and dummies can be an effective way to sow doubt in the minds of drone operators as to whether they are attacking the right target, he added. Ukraine also deploys decoy mannequins, which were reportedly stationed around the Kharkiv region after the area was recaptured towards the end of 2022. Kiev also positioned fake planes at airfields Privy Re and Odessa in the past, as well as employing inflatable fake weapons and wooden replicas of HIMARS missile systems. Ian Garner, a historian and analyst of Russian culture, said any military that wasn't using this cheap, effective tactic would be foolish. Decoys like this work really well. The war is extremely expensive and both sides are facing onslaughts of drones. If it is cheap to procure mannequins and fake equipment to draw fire and save your men and take out drones and artillery. 
As the Telegraph notes, decoys have been used as a key military tactic for thousands of years, but they previously focused on large vehicles such as tanks and aircraft. However, technological advances mean that military fakes are also evolving, with some equipment even simulating heat and radar signals. At the same time, the publication notes it is unclear whether dummies will be used in the video or whether this was done intentionally as part of a broader deception plan. Russian forces have used decoys since the war began in February 2022, including painting aircraft at their air bases to mislead potential attackers. A Ukrainian special forces source also said that since 2022, Russian forces have increasingly used fake soldiers around Kherson.